praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm happy to be here with you today. And today we are going to discuss a very fundamental topic. A topic that asks the question, what is Christianity? This message is meant for those who do not know about Christianity or who want to find out about Christianity. This message is also meant for Christians who may learn one or two things from what we are going to share today. I am going to start with the definition of Christianity. What is Christianity? Christianity in its simplest form can be defined or said to be a way of life that is fashioned after the way of life of Jesus Christ. Remember, fashioned after the way of life of Jesus Christ. Not any other person. Not Paul, not Peter, not Joseph, not Moses, not Elijah, not Mohammed. A life that is fashioned after the life of Jesus Christ. So as a Christian, before doing or saying something, what you ought to ask yourself is, will Jesus do this? Will Jesus say this? Will Jesus react like this? If the answer is yes, that means you are acting as a Christian. If you have doubt, then there is a problem. Now, as you may all well know, the name Christian to many is a form of religion but like I mentioned earlier it is not a religion Christian was first mentioned in the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 26 in the Bible however unlike many religions Christianity has no pillars many religions have their pillars but Christianity have no pillars why because first and foremost Christianity is not a religion it is a way of life now if you must insist that oh on what is Christianity built Christianity is built on what is called a foundation unlike the other religions that are built on pillars Christianity is built on a foundation and the Apostle Paul helped us in defining that in the book of first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 let's open there please the book of first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 just in case you are listening to me and you do not have a Bible as long as you are listening to me it means probably you have an internet so you could just go into google.com and put in Bible or you could just go to the website called www.biblegateway.com www.biblegateway.com and preferably I would rather you use the King James version I would rather you use the King James version however if you feel uncomfortable using the King James version then you can use any other version that is suitable to you among the versions available, we have the New International Version, the, even the New King James, and uh, so many others. So you have a lot of lists there to choose from. Just take your time. You could pause this video and go through it and make sure that you read along with us. I'm reading from the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians is in the New Testament, and uh, it's a book or a letter that is written by Paul. To the Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Paul is saying here, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me 
as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundations, and another builded thereon. But let every man take heed how he builded thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. This is the foundation of Christianity, Jesus Christ. Everything is built upon Jesus Christ. If there is any other foundation aside from this, it is not Christianity. I repeat, any other foundation aside from Jesus Christ is not Christianity. Now, you may ask the question that who is this Jesus Christ? Why Jesus Christ? Hmm. A very deep question. It's actually one of the mysteries of Christianity. However, the Bible has made us to understand that Jesus Christ is someone that had no beginning. He has no end. He is he who was. He is he who is and he is he who is to come huh. i don't know if you understand that he is he who was he is he who is and he is he who is to come jesus christ is a member of the godhead and the Godhead is made of three personalities. God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is the highest, followed by God Jesus Christ, which is the Son, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. However, <laughs> they are equal. Another mystery of Christianity. Do not try to understand it because you cannot understand it. How can they be higher than each other and yet be equal and yet be one? They are equal, they are one, and they are in unity. Just take it. Which is another thing that is in Christianity. Other religions are based upon pillars. But Christianity is based on foundation of Jesus Christ it is not a religion it is a way of life however what is built upon this foundation differs from place to place from church to church and from denomination to denomination which is why as a Christian or as one who seeks to be a Christian you ought to be careful the kind of church you go to you ought to be careful the kind of messages you listen to you ought to be careful the kind of doctrine you are being fed with because on judgment day ignorance will be no excuse there is no oh father i didn't know oh god i didn't know i didn't know no everything is written here for you it is not hidden it is not passworded it is, it is written here, clear and plain, for you to follow. So whatever you have been taught, you should come back to the Bible and ask yourself, is this what the Bible is saying? The Bible will be the standard of judgment. And as much as I would have loved to dilute this for you, I cannot dilute it. Hell is real. Heaven is real. God has a standard. And that standard will not be lowered for you or for any other person. There is no degree of holiness with God. It's either you are holy or you are not. It's either you are perfect or you are not. It's either you are in or out. 
there is no lukewarmness there is no standing on the fence there is no oh he is 80 percent holy or is 99.9 percent holy it will not get you to heaven a single blemish will send you straight to the pits of hell and just for your information there is no purgatory do not be deceived there is nothing like purgatory not in this bible and history has proven that purgatory was a message that was brought in from pagan worship now back to our topic jesus is the foundation of christianity but what is built on it differs from denomination to denomination which is why paul said here in the book of first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 he said in towards the last verse towards the last sentence rather of verse 10 he says but let every man take heed how he builded upon then if you go to verse 11 it says for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ in verse 12 he continues he said now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay or stubble verse 13 every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is you see paul is saying here that oh you could build different kind of things upon this foundation but god will try it by fire and (laughs) that every man's work everything that is built upon jesus christ will be tried I will explain further later. Verse 14. If any man's work abide which he had built there upon, he shall receive a reward. He said now that if any man's work, anyone that builds upon Jesus Christ, after the fire has passed through and the and the work stands, the person shall receive the reward. But verse 15 says, But if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire <laughs> this very verse has been a topic of debate for a while but i agree with the school of thought that says that what is actually saying there is if somebody preached a wrong doctrine or if somebody has a convert and somehow that convert turns away from christ hmm, because of trials, because of tribulation, that person turned away from Christ. Or the doctrine was a fake doctrine. But the person that was preaching it actually believed that he was preaching the truth. He's saying that, oh, the doctrine will fade away. But the man himself will be saved. We are not talking about grace, which is another mystery in Christianity. Now, Paul here is saying that there are different things that can be built upon the foundation. But one great thing about Christianity is that it is about faith. Faith in God. And what is faith? The book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Let's see Hebrews chapter 12. Sorry, 11 rather. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now, I repeat, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now, faith. Is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen confusing faith is the substance of things you are hoping for <laughs> the belief that these things are real the evidence of things that your eyes have not yet seen most of us have not seen God most of us have not seen jesus but we believe that is faith 
That is another mystery in Christianity. Now, why is Jesus Christ the foundation of Christianity? The reason can be found in the whole of the Bible. Because that is what it's all about. So, a YouTube video will not allow me to do justice to it. However, I will summarize. God created the heaven and the earth. After creating everything, he put man in it. But placed man in a special garden called the Garden of Eden. When man was alone, he felt, oh, it's not good for man to be alone. Let's give him a companion. They discussed among themselves. And they agreed, okay, let's give him a companion. Let's give him a companion. So they gave man a companion. That man's name is called Adam. And the companion they gave him is called Eve. Now, Satan, who is God's arch enemy, came and deceived Eve. Eve, in turn, deceived her husband. The Lord found out and the Lord drove them out of the Garden of Eden. That was the separation between man and God. Jesus Christ came to reunite man with God. But because of our evil tendencies, we seem to resist this unification. Or will I call it reunion? But I'm speaking to you here today. If you have problems in your life, if you have tribulations, if you are weary, you are not sure of tomorrow, Jesus Christ is telling you, come ye that are heaven laden and I will give you rest. Meaning, all you who are carrying heavy loads, having heavy thoughts, bring your problems to me. I will take them from you. He didn't say, oh, you will not have problems. He just said, no, I will replace them with something that is lighter. He said, because my own, the problem that comes with me, there is no problem per se, but you will be having tribulations and some challenges. He said, these things are light compared to what you have right now. So, in trying to unite man with God, God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to the world. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Another mystery of Christianity, believe. All you need to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe he is your master and savior. Believe he is the one that is able to take you from the grip of Satan. Believe he is the one that can stop you from taking drugs. Believe he is the one that can stop you from selling your body. Believe he is the one that can make your financial worries go away. Believe is the one that can make your academic dreams come to fruition. Believe is the one that can make your career move forward. Believe is the one that can make your business grow. Believe is the one that can bring peace into your marriage. Believe is the one that can give you a husband or a wife. Believe is the one that can make you enter heaven because that is the key. Jesus Christ said something. I have not heard or read about any religion in which anybody, any of the so-called prophets or leaders made a claim as powerful as it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. 
It's an exclusive right. He says you cannot come to God unless you pass through him. He says you cannot come to God the Father unless you go through him, Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you here today, I am a living witness of the work of Jesus Christ. When I think about where I'm supposed to be or where I was and where I am now, all I can say is glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus is real. God is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Now, you may start asking, how can God have come in a human form? Another mystery. But he came in a human form. He was killed. And before being killed, he was brutalized. Then he was buried. And after that, on the third day, he rose. And attained his position on the right hand of God. The Bible says he took captivity captive. And all this humiliation, brutality, and death was all for you and me. I pray that as you are listening to me, and, there's, and if there's any problem that is troubling you, that the Lord will make you see the light. And bring your problems to him. Because he is the only problem solver. No matter the diseases. No matter what the doctors have said. Only Jesus Christ. Can solve your problems. When he was alive. He did great miracles. He raised the dead. Healed the sick. The blind saw. The lame worked. Name it was done and he said all these things I'm doing is more compared to what you will do Jesus Christ like I said is the one who was is one who is the great physician is still alive today and he will meet you at the point of your need in Jesus name Amen now you may ask, how do I become a Christian? It's simple. All you need to do is give your life to Jesus Christ by going down on your knees and asking for forgiveness of your sins. You confess every sin you can remember to God, not to a priest, just between you and God. You confess every sin, every sin you have committed to God. Confess it and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come and take control of your life. To come and be Lord over your life. To come and take charge over your body, soul and spirit. And it is done. It is as simple as that. There is no form to be filled. It is as simple as that. That is another mystery of Christianity. Because... The blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary when Jesus was killed is what is purchasing you back to God. And I assure you with all certainty that if you do this, your life will never remain the same again. But if you do not give your life to Christ right now, tomorrow may be too late. And if you are doubting, oh, hell is not real, heaven is not real, they are just using it to manipulate Christians. It is better you assume that hell is real now than to assume that hell is not real. Then you die and go and find out that hell is real. 
May the Lord grant us grace in Jesus name. Even me that I'm praying, preaching to you, I pray that I will not miss heaven after preaching to you. Because it is not something to be hoped for. It is beyond your imagination. Have you ever tried being without food for seven days? Food and water for seven days? Just imagine having that for a year. Then having year in, year out. No food, no water. Yet in heat. It is beyond your imagination. Hell was not designed for man. It was designed for the fallen angels. But alternatively, men destined themselves for hell. I pray that the Lord will draw you to himself in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have any question, you can inbox me through the link or place a comment or try as much as possible to read the comments and reply. Uh, your, criticism, your criticisms are welcome. Um, this is actually my first video on YouTube and uh, I pray that with time I will improve. I hope with this little message I've been able to bless you one way or the other. Thank you and God bless you. Amen.